Hello, this is just a short video on how I play Nisha and uh, a quick demo on how I farm the, the raid boss of Borderlands, the pre-sequel. Uh, this build is a law and order build and it's focused around using continuous laser beams and uh, buff juggling and stacking to uh, do an insane amount of damage. Uh, so we're going to start with weapons here and you'll notice that three of my weapons are laser weapons. And you'll notice that all three of them uh, are extremely easily attainable from quests uh, or quest-like things. <laughs> uh, so E-Gun you can get from sub-level 13 uh, by talking to Pickle and accepting his quest and then turning in the the item you get at the end uh, not to him. Uh, and so you get the E-Gun which is a very nice gun. Mix Moxie's Viber Pulse. If you've already picked it up from the uh, chest in Concordia, you can reset the chest by entering a portal from Serenity's Waste or Triton Falls instead of fast traveling to Concordia, and you will find that the chest has been reset as of the making of this video. Uh, and then our third one is Toby's Bright Spadroon, which is the lightsaber gun from Vila or Virago Solitude. It's from the Star Wars, Star Wars reference quest where you escort bots over to Toby on Adobe. Uh, and this, basically this weapon is going to be our highest damage output gun versus shields, and so we're going to use it uh, as much as we can. And the reason why we're able to use it to such uh, success is because of the nature of our build and the survivability of our build. Uh, in situations where we need to do shield damage, but we're unable or unwilling to get in a melee range, then Moxie's Vibra Pulse is the answer to that. Uh, and so, in a way, these, these two weapons are kind of interchangeable. Uh, one's basically a, a long-range version of what we want to do, and one's basically a high damage, or higher damage, because this is by no means low damage, but this one is certainly higher. Uh, the E-Gun is for, for burning home in phases where we're just shooting into his health, uh, and I think there's four phases of that, uh, and it does a really good job at it. The reason we, we use, or we're packing this gun, uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be this gun. It doesn't matter that this is Wild Hammer Buster 2. That doesn't matter at all. Um, this gun just needs to be the your best non-elemental or explosive gun. Uh, we just need to be able to do a lot of damage uh, because one of his mask phases, when he's Empyrean, uh, he will have a shock element, and that means that his shield is shock resistance. Uh, so in addition to be resi being resistant to fire, corrosive, and cryo, it is also resistant to shock. So the only two elements that we're able to use without uh, getting resists is non-elemental and explosive. So just the best weapon you have with either one of those uh, qualifications is what we should have here. For shield, I, I prefer turtle shields for this build. The reason for that is because capacity, uh, the shield capacity is extremely large, and that works really well with our law, and it works really well with our uh, bottled courage. And we'll go over and take a peek at that in a moment. Uh, and the minus max health actually helps us a little bit. It, it's not as bad as it seems. Reason for that is because it means that uh, order order stacks are uh, easier to to build up, right? Since our max health is lower, a percentage of our max health is also lower. And since order is based on percent of max health, that means that uh, it, it takes less damage to get an order, uh, a stack of order, which means basically in practical terms that we'll have uh, 30 stacks of order before they even touch our health, which can be nice. Um, the other thing that it helps with is health gaining. It basically means that we, we need a lower flat amount of health in order to uh, reap the benefits from health gaining, so to speak. Uh, my grenade is a lobbed bonus package. It's literally the only reason I'm using this is because it's a legendary. I don't use grenades because I forget, and it's really... <laughs> it doesn't do uh, enough damage to even spend the time throwing it. Um, my Oz kit is kind of strange. You might think that when I'm doing uh, going for high damage, I would use a damage Oz kit, like the Tranquility or the Fire Rate one. Uh, not the case. I found that this one is actually, in addition to being the most fun one to use, it uh, also helps quite a bit with damage uh, because 
on the first four or first three phases, excuse me, we're going to be using a lightsaber. And the drawback of the lightsaber is that it's extremely short range. Uh, so what the air control and speed boost allows us to do is it basically lets us stay in that range and the uh, and doing damage. And it's really worth it because this is such an insane amount of damage. Uh, on top of that, it's just really fun. It makes uh, low gravity, which is already a really fun mechanic, even better. Highly recommend this. Uh, the the item that you'll probably have to farm for, uh, and this one is probably this one's important, I think, uh, is this class mod. I'm not sure if it's the gritty part or the sheriff part, but um, the the important thing is the skill points. The gun damage is is certainly nice. Uh, it's definitely not required. Basically, what we're looking for is that high unchained bonus because unchained is our, I believe, is the the skill that does the most for us uh, and really adds the most damage. Uh, bonafide grit as well adds a lot of damage, especially on phases where we're doing critical damage. The law skill is nice. The gun damage is very nice. The max health, uh, it's neither good nor bad. Uh, it kind of counteracts what I was saying about max health here, but uh, you know it's it's kind of worth taking that because of everything else it has. So we're gonna move on to skills. This build is uh, I've never seen it because I made it up myself. Um, most of the people go for the fan the hammer capstone, and that was what I was looking forward to uh, when I first saw Nisha. Uh, However, when I first started leveling up, I figured Law and Order would be better because of the health uh, regeneration mechanic. And I got all the way down to 25. Uh, I beat normal Vault Hunter mode, and then I, I switched over to Fan the Hammer. And then I switched back uh, 10 or 20 minutes later because I was so bored with it. And it just wasn't quite as fun. And it didn't have the survivability I was used to. And so I went back to Law and Order, and I kind of built something around it. And that's what you're seeing now. So. Uh, the general idea is that you build order stacks, which isn't difficult, uh, and you maintain order stacks, which isn't difficult, and you build unchained stacks, which isn't difficult, and you maintain unchained stacks, which is the difficult part of this build, is actually making sure that you're keeping your unchained stacks at 21 as often as you can. Uh, losing that buff is really a big hit, and you don't want that to happen because it's... Uh, Let's face it; it's a it's a huge amount of damage that it's adding to us. Uh, so that's that's the first part of the build. The second part is whenever you want to um, kill something, whenever you want to do a lot of damage to a boss, you're going to kill one of the mobs that he has, one of his trash mobs, and it's going to give you a crap ton of bonuses that are going to make you just uh, extremely powerful. And you're going to get that kill, and then you're going to use showdown, and you're just going to melt the boss. Um, the only boss where that's kind of an issue is Irujiro because he spawns his mobs extremely late, <laughs> I've noticed. Uh, so basically what you're going to want to do, optimal situation, is you, you get a, you get a, a mob, uh, fairly low, and then you use Thunder Crackdown, uh, to kill him, which will give you Jurisdiction, which is an extra 20% gun damage, which is nice, but certainly not necessary when you're looking at 20%, 60%. 30% fire speed, 35% damage, 70% crit damage. This one is, in comparison, not quite as important, but it's always very nice. Uh, I think it's better than the alternative, because this doesn't really do that much for us. We don't really need movement speed, because we're getting it from here in our Oz kit. Um, we can't get this, of course, because we need something lower. Uh, I don't. I dislike wanted. I just don't like the way it works, so I skip that. And that's basically it. We don't want to be we want to be critting as much as possible, which means a lot of the time hip firing. For this specific boss, not so much, so it doesn't matter, but uh I think the critical hit damage bonus from this and the unchained is definitely required for this build. Uh and so that's that's the general idea. I'll I'll be keeping my unchained stacks, that's that's the utmost important thing. Or I guess after staying alive, <laughs> the second thing we want to be doing is keeping up unchained stacks. And then the second thing is uh, burning down the boss, and that just means killing uh, killing trash mobs when we're able to uh, when we have a window to do damage to them. So I'm going to start 
actually fighting him now. And I'm going to start off with the, uh, the lightsaber, and you'll see how much damage this does. Right now I've got absolutely no stacks of anything running, and I'm just... I'm killing him, and there's nothing he can do about it. Uh, you'll see I'll, I'll be standing in melee range at almost all points uh, when I'm able to here uh, because I don't care about dying and so I'm gonna kill him pull out my lightsaber and just uh, turn on showdown and burn him and he's down that's all it takes one interesting thing is that when he's transitioning between phases here you're able to shoot him and it counts as a as a mob to uh, to build unchained on uh, but not when he's actually dead no idea what that is. You saw me pull out my Miss Moxies there for a moment, and that was just because he was in the air, and it's kind of a pain in the ass to hit him. And so that's the reason why I use Miss Moxies, is that we're still able to do damage to him even when he's in a, uh, in a position where the lightsaber is kind of uh, either hard to use or impossible to use. Since we're shooting into his health right now, we're going to use E-Gun. Uh, I think the lightsaber is still a, a really good contender here in terms of just straight damage. The benefit of the E-Gun, however, is uh, <laughs> we don't need to be in melee range, obviously. Uh, and it's also the reason why this is the gun we'll be using, uh, or why we pack the Miss Moxie's pulser, basically, is in the uh, next phase of the fight where he's flying up in the sky, it's it's really not feasible to, to hit him with a what's a melee range gun basically. Uh, so this is an important part of the fight because what I'm doing right here is I'm 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 shooting them once and then running away and then shooting them once and running away and what you'll notice that's doing is that it's uh, it's keeping my enchained running all 21 stacks and you can do that up until his head pops out of the ground you're able to shoot his head and his body but not his arms to get unchained stacks so now I'm going to do something a little cheeky. I'm going to kill him, I'm going to switch to my lightsaber, and I'm going to try to do a uh, an interesting thing here. That didn't quite work. Let's see if I can get it. Yeah. Where you can chunk his health a little bit um, by, by using the black hole he creates uh, as sort of a boost, basically. And if you do it correctly, you'll just kill him instantly and immediately go to this phase of the fight. Um... So you'll see the Egon just tears into him. It's uh, it's really quite eye-opening. The first time I saw this happening, I was laughing my ass off. Um, right now I'm just shooting at his head because I don't really want to be shooting at the mobs. Uh, maybe a little bit. I want to get him, get him down to that amount so that I can melee him and get all my benefits at once. And then I'm going to start shooting at him. And the reason I'm not using Miss Moxie's right here uh, is because, as you'll notice, he has shock element right now, and he is resistant to shock damage, um, which is super unfortunate because, it, like I said, the only thing that we can use against him and not get resisted is non-elemental, and so this is my non-elemental damage. Uh, you'll see that I'll, I'll basically try to go to his side and shoot from there because crits do an insane amount of damage, as you'll notice. Uh, both because of our um, our bona fide grit, and also I think he just takes a crap ton of crit damage for whatever reason. Uh, and so you'll see, we're just we're just murdering him. Uh, the next fight in particular, or the next phase, excuse me, is usually the shortest one as well. Um, I don't know why he just takes quite a bit of damage, uh, especially when his shield is down. So I'm going to pop my showdown, kill something, and then just shoot at his shield. And if I did it correctly, I'll be able to kill him before he starts puking. All right? And then if I do it correctly here, I'll be able to kill him before he actually starts doing anything else. Meaningful, I guess. Alright, and so that's, that's Raid Boss. <laughs> Law and Order Nisha. It's quite a tremendous amount of damage, and it's a tremendous amount of survivability. Uh, I didn't go down a single time in this particular fight. Uh, I usually average maybe one down uh, or two-ish. Um, 
but it's really never an issue. I'm never in a situation where I feel scared that I'm going to die. Uh, so that was my video. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you'll give this build a try because it's loads of fun. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.